Games in this podcast range from E to M. Hey, everybody. Welcome to the official Xbox podcast, the only podcast coming to you from inside Xbox. We've got a great show for you this week. We're going to be breaking down all of April's Xbox Game Pass announcements. We've got a world first unboxing of a brand new Xbox wireless controller. We also have some other stuff, but the teleprompter didn't fast forward for me. So I'm just going to just, we're, we'll just assume it's fine. It's, it's going to be a good show. It's Actually, we're, <laughs> oh, now, now that woke him up. Yeah, so we're going to be talking about Call of Duty, uh, Warzone, uh, Season 3. Warzone, of course, out on mobile as well, but also Season 3 coming to console, PC, wherever you play your Warzone. Zones. And, uh, you know, for those of you who are watching us on youtube.com slash Xbox, you'll notice we are here in the studio, but note, we can you can listen to us uh, on audio, Spotify, uh, Apple Podcasts, just search for Xbox Podcasts. So I mentioned we're back in the studio. You can see who we're with. This is great. Tina's on the road. Well, first of all, it, it's good to see you again. Haley Geller, how you been? Good, how are you? Thanks for having me. Well, it is always nice having you. Last time you were on the show, you were just coming off of like back to back to back concerts. Back to back to back concerts. You're still all the just bad running bunny. that. Yeah, <laughs> bad bunny. I've heard about this. It how was, did that go? It was amazing. 10 out of 10. Um, didn't go to any concerts recently, but I have been listening to the Beyonce album, Cowboy Carter, on repeat. Amazing. Um, if you have an hour and like 18 minutes ish, to yourself Ish. yeah 16 seconds listen yeah. to it top to bottom everything flows amazingly together like typical beyonce um it's yeah her first uh country album it's incredible she won like an innovator award at um some music awards that happened i guess last night but it will not be last night when you watch this um she's just amazing you have all your merch all your cowboy carter merch. i did buy the vinyl and it comes with a t-shirt and i'm very <laughs> excited so maybe i'll wear it next time Do you like Beyonce? obsessed <laughs> obsessed very good yeah. and uh here's someone we've wanted to have on the show for <laughs> quite some time 343's ron um, brown how are you sir i am here allergies <laughs> have been in my face that's why we're back in the about, studio yeah, uh, about a week now so yeah. everything that you hear is full of a nasal filter well, Stay in here. It's safe. There's <laughs> pollen levels are relatively oh, low. So great. Not a single living thing in here except <laughs> us. It's nice. I enjoy that. Very good. Uh, can you just tell us a little bit about what you do? You're oh, the uh, ambassador, the franchise, franchise ambassador, ambassador for 343. Okay. So as franchise ambassador, my job centers around diversity inclusion initiatives, philanthropic initiatives, and general studio connections. Hey, Ron, we want to work with some veterans. We don't know how. All right, I got you. I'm going to talk to USO. We're going to hook that up. And do. Hey, Ron, man, we want to do a make Wish visit, man. This kid, literally last week, we had a make a wish visit where a kid could have chosen to see John Cena and decided otherwise, which blew my friggin' mind. Wanted to meet the creators of Halo, and that is my jam. We pulled out the stops for that kid. Big shout out to Andrew. Do I get to do a shout out to Andrew? Where's the shout do out it. to Andrew? I didn't get to do it on the live stream, my man, so I'm doing it on the podcast. I see you, my guy. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, I'm done. Um, <laughs> just anytime we go to make the world a better place or make like studio connections, uh, that is that is my jam, and I'm gonna be on the front lines. That's it, it's got to be really meaningful. That oh, Halo means so much to so many time. people, and all you get time. to help really make those wishes yeah. come true. It's crazy humbling too, especially because one. Like, you, you get kind of mired in the day-to-day, -day, so you, you start to think, like, oh, okay, man, just Halo. It, it, it becomes, start to become a little bit rote. Uh, and then you see somebody who sees it through a completely different lens, and you're like, oh, wait, that's amazing. He loves this stuff. I, I think we could do a little bit better. I think we could work a little bit harder. So it's galvanizing, to say the least. So I feel like I know you because uh, even though it's the first time I think we've met in person, uh, you've hosted some like team internal yeah. Yeah. Uh, sort of uh, major meetings for yeah. folks and your personality person. really came through. So we were really happy to have you on here. But I feel like you really get to know somebody when you find out what kind of games they play. So what do you, what's been in your Xbox, on your PC, whatever, where have you been so, playing? Recently? So. I discovered a key thing about me as a gamer very recently. I need to have at least three types of games in rotation at all times. All right, go into this. I need a multiplayer. Mm -hmm. I need a RPG, an RPG, like something that's got a story, something that's gonna keep me socked in. And I need a mindless, I could play this forever until the cows come home. So right now, I, I oscillate between Overwatch and Halo. For so those are your multiplayers. Those are my multiplayers. Uh, 
Halo for proficiency, Overwatch for the the fun factor. Uh, Unicorn Overlord. Good man. Slap my face. Unicorn Overlord is the truth. I got a whole army in the name of the unicorn. All right, shut up and take my money. Stop talking. Stop. Do you get to pick like what kind of unicorn or? Oh, oh, oh. You do get to design the flag of your okay. of your army. The thing okay. I love about this game is every battle that you fight, you end up, almost everyone, you end up picking up somebody new. Someone's like, I want to get in on this team. Yep. And you start off as just like this, these under these underdogs and throughout the game, then you get more and more powerful and you start to build that momentum. It's and then great. you get someone, you're like, oh, I hope that person, they've got key art, you know? Maybe maybe they'll join my team. They've got a proper name. Exactly, and, and if they do, then you're like, oh, where am I going to put them in? <laughs> okay, I maybe love this I'll game. try this, Oh maybe. my God, it's yeah. great. You're selling it. You're and selling then the it. other thing is, uh, you don't actually have to fight the battles. You really just kind of set your squad and say, can you beat them? Like oh, no. Oh, the they work. would demolish you. Don't go fight them. Don't, don't do that. Uh, can you beat them? Oh, yeah, you bully them into dust. Go just take that yep. fight. Take that fight all day long. So that's, that's, my, that's my RPG. And the mindless one, like so many people, Bellatro. This oh. is the fourth week in oh. a row someone has come on here oh. and right mentioned now. Bellatro. Tell us yeah. what you oh, love about Bellatro. Bellatro is my jam. So first off, I'm already a card dude. So like card games are my jam. I've been playing cards since I was like single digit ages. Like cards just running my family. So it's like you already got me on board. Then you got a roguelike. Do you know how many runs of Hades I went through? Do you know how many times Dead Cells punched me in my face? I got right back up and said, all right, run it again. But lot, this is going to be amazing. And then I can spend money? You, what? Mm, shut up and take all of my money. I've been just playing. Just just mindless. All right, I can do one more. One more. One more blind. I got this. I can, I can run one more time. I know it's three in the morning. I work. It's fine. I got this. It's <laughs> one more time. This will be the one. It wasn't, but it felt yeah. like it was going to be the one. So you haven't you haven't had that perfect run yet. Oh, I've beaten it a oh, couple of times. Oh, never mind. Okay, I, I should die. But I at this asked. point... I'm still, like, now I'm at, at some of the other decks that, like, ooh, this is going to be, how do I do this? Or, like, some of the difficulty levels, mm -hmm. I'm like, mm, how do I? Sad Panda. So it's really more of a puzzle game than a card game all in a lot of ways, right? Oh, yeah. it, it scratches a lot of different itches. Oh, my God, I could talk all day. Don't, don't. <laughs> okay, well, we, we've only got an hour, but we will come back. I, I think we picked we up on that. need an hour just for him to yeah. talk just about Just to his talk games. about, the, yeah. have you heard the good word of Bellatro? <laughs> um, just literally only on this doors. week. Yes, 100% yeah. pamphlets. I got, I got the information. I got this. Okay, I'll come find you and you can teach me. Haley, uh, what are you playing right now? Um, shocker, my list is not super long. Um, act surprised, but I played Hollow Knight for the first time, and I feel like I've really been missing out uh -huh. on this. It's super fun, but also the most <laughs> aggravating game <laughs> ever. Um, but yeah, the music's amazing, the atmosphere. I like the little insect bugs as bosses that constantly come for you. Um, there was this point, like, I think it was 30 or 45 minutes in where there's just like this big, you know, Tonka truck insect dude. And he's like the boss you have to get by. And he would just like smack me and I died immediately on the spot. And then you have to go back to the sad looking park bench to like regain uh, your health let's let's so let's back up here <laughs> obviously a lot of people Sad, but... talk about hollow knight silk song anytime there's a show yeah. anytime there's a nintendo direct oh, anything that's it. all the chat yeah. and everything and I and no people idea. and and so we know people love hollow yeah. knight but if you're if you hadn't played never and i'll yeah. be honest i i have it downloaded on both my xbox and on my rogue ally I'm, maybe next week will be the week it's <laughs> definitely on my stack of shame yeah what kind of game stack is it um i'd say it kind of gives Ori vibes. Like, it definitely has that, like, platformer really? game, and it has, like, the exploration that I like where you can take different paths mm -hmm. and see where it takes you in, like, this underground, I think they call it, like, the hollow nest area. Um, but, yeah, it's very, uh, like, action adventure, which I tend to like most of the time because you can just get sucked in and not realize you've been playing for, like, three hours, but also know that you've been playing for three hours because you want to throw your controller. You know. Yeah. <laughs> you know. Um, but yeah, if you like Ori, I would say like 10 out of 10, give it a try. Um, or Dead I'd, Cells. It reads very Dead Cells to me. 
I've never played that either, but I'll trust you. Dead Cells is yeah. uh, an all timer, so okay. uh, in, in the in the roguelike sort oh, yeah. of uh, game. Yeah, oh, yeah. Hades, Hades as well. So okay, okay good. All yeah. right, so we got plenty of stuff to play here. Yes. Uh, real quick, I've been playing uh, Bulwark, and if this is not a game that immediately is something where, you, uh, yeah, maybe wrong. <laughs> I tried the Falcon. Yes, okay. So the Falconeer was a like a day one launch title for Xbox Series X and S, made by pretty much one person uh, named named Thomas Sala, and it was a very challenging game. I definitely I, I played quite a bit of it because it was a day one launch game. It was like uh, that was so it was Assassin's Creed, and then I would bounce back and forth just as a a bit of a palate cleanser. Really interesting world building and takes place in like a. Yeah, like a world of islands, of small islands, and people are just like clinging to rocks and trying to survive. So Thomas Sulla, and I don't think he's the only person who worked on this game, but I think did m the majority of the work. He's an interesting person to, to follow on social because he really gets into how he builds his games. This is more of a, a strategy game with really simplistic controls. I wouldn't say the game is simplistic, but just left stick, A button, X button, Everything you need to know happens in there and uh, has a really streamlined sort of control scheme. But it takes place in that same world of Ursi, of these islands. But instead of it being action, it's more of a real-time strategy game. Got into it last night, played a few hours, really interesting stuff. Big fan of what he does. He's an interesting person, like I said, to follow on social. So the game's called Bulwark. It's out now, worth checking out, um, just for a very different take on, on strategy games. So uh, enjoying that. Ron? The Falconeer drove me banana sandwich. <laughs> the controls, I just never got the hang of them. I would say like one of the easiest to control RTSs that, I, that I've ever played because it, it, it keeps things real smooth, keeps things on a track. You're not moving, you're not even really moving a cursor in a way. And then you switch over, if you hit Y, you switch over to this airship and you use the airship to navigate and explore. Then you hit Y, go back to where you're building the buildings. Anyway, interesting stuff. Give it a shot, read a review, look at a video, watch a stream. You, know, you can you can make up your mind that way. One other game we'll be talking about uh, as we get deeper into Game Pass games is a game called Botany Manor. This is a game I've talked about, I want to say, in previous shows. I first played it about a year ago at GDC. This is a game, did you ever play The Witness? No, but okay. I've heard of it. Another all timer. So after after you're done with Hollow Knight, look up the that witness. Backlog. It came out early uh, in the Xbox One generation. This is one of the best puzzle adventure games ever made where you're uh, sort of navigating this island full of mysteries and uh, very challenging uh, secrets and puzzles, some of which involve light, some of which are more traditional puzzles, some involve sound. It's an all-timer. Mm -hmm. Definitely uh, getting some vibes from this from Botany Manor. Now, it's under review embargo. I did beat the game. I could, I'm very limited in what I can say, so I'm trying to like keep it to things that, have already, that are already out there. <laughs> Basically, the crux of the game is that um, you're navigating this this beautiful manor. It actually looks very painterly, very watercolory, kind of like uh, you did see in The Witness. But your your the puzzles are plants, and these are plants that are not real life plants. They're like fantastical plants, and you're figuring out how to make them bloom. And so you're solving puzzles. You're finding notes all around the manor. You're manipulating the heat and the winds and all light and all kinds of other things in order to do the exact things that these plants need to bloom and when they do it usually unlocks another part of the the manor and you get to go all the way through i think that's all i can say but we're actually not gonna have a show next week because a bunch of us are on vacation so i really recommend check out botany manor um can i even say i recommend it without breaking embargo <laughs> so i'll just slap my own wrist <laughs> yeah, i shouldn't have not? said that Can't it's a game it's i talked good. about it you can Play it or not play it, don't come at it me. It is a game that exists. IGN reviewers Did they or whoever. say whether or not it's like factual? Like, are these real life tips? They, because I kill I, every plant that I buy, so. I, I, I'm playing this game because I kill plants okay. in real life. I actually tried Black buying clubs. some last yeah. week. And uh, half of them were dead already. Not, you could not murder plants. I'm not trying to murder cool? them. I, I never know how much water, how often, Look, what kind of light. I want them to grow. What yeah. I don't want to do is the basic research necessary to keep them alive. No, or my cat will eat it. No, there you, you never go. Know. Yeah. I'm calling CPS on both your plants. <laughs> <laughs> both of you. Botany <laughs> PS. Botany <laughs> PS. Plant protective Man, services. Man, we're bringing you on the show and already you're getting narking us out to the plant police. <laughs> well, anyway, so 
<laughs> Body Matter would be the game that I feel good. It's sort of like how Power Wash Simulator. I'm not okay. power washing my house. That's a lot of work. No. It uses a lot of water. But also, but it I'll play Power Wash Simulator. Yeah, absolutely. Body Matter is for those of us who kill plants at home, but okay. want to solve a, some some I fun could, puzzles let's here. Let's do it. That's out next I week a on of Game Pass in, in video game land. I will lie to you. <laughs> All right. So this week. Uh, Season 3, Call of Duty, Modern Warfare 3, and Warzone has been released. New season brings the return of Rebirth Island, new core, 6v6 maps, a new zombies mission, rift explorations, four new weapons, eight aftermarket parts, and a full Call of Duty Warzone mobile integration. So you can, you can play here, you can elevate, you can unlock your black cell here, you can go back and forth wherever you go. I'm actually looking forward to trying it out on a plane this weekend. Anyway, it's more than I could tell you about. So instead of listing off all of these new features, let's send it over to Rebecca, who sat down with Etienne and Tom to learn all about what the third season of Call of Duty and the recent release of Warzone Mobile bring to the Call of Duty universe. Take it away, Rebecca. Warzone Mobile just launched a couple of weeks ago, and season three, by the time that this is airing, will have released earlier this week. And so joining the show, we have Etienne from Binox and Tom from Solid State Studios. Welcome to the show, guys, and congrats on launch. How are you feeling now that you know the game is in players' hands and season three's out? Yeah, great. Uh, great to be here. Um, we're really excited for mobile to be out and part of the Call of Duty ecosystem. And we're really excited getting a ton of feedback. Uh, we're also really excited for season three because that'll be the first full season that mobile enters the Call of Duty franchise. So excited for that. Yeah. And on the side of mainline, just having Rebirth to be back for Warzone, I think that it's something that a lot of players was asking for. So it's the, the perfect time to to return to that great great map and and provide with, with a lot of fun gameplay that, that will be coming for like the, the old two months in front of yeah. us. Cool. Well, I have a lot of questions about Warzone Mobile in particular, but Season 3 just came out, so it's a little bit more timely. So let's chat about that first, Etienne. Um, so tell us about your work. You're the creative designer for Warzone, correct? Yeah, so so my work is is I have a lot of discussion with with the the different teams. So a lot of people are trying idea of oh what could be cool and interesting to, to provide into uh, a new Warzone experience. But I think that at the end, I'm just making sure that we we have the same goal and that we're we're providing the best experience that we can do with Rebirth Island. So for season three, just to to give you an example uh, of those discussion, um, we have that mechanic in BR that we call a Champions Quest, and so we are looking at how can we provide something uh, like a Champions Quest mechanic, but inside Resurgence and Rebirth Island is the perfect fit for that that type of challenge so it's it's really into the more hardcore player of warzone but we, we know that a lot of player love resurgence so having that type of feature to be available uh, for them will be will be really interesting to to follow and see <laughs> how they can how they can find solution to to complete that that really big challenge um there is other ID that uh, it's more like returning ID, but but again, uh, just to give you an example, we have something that we call the weapon trade station. Uh, it was something that we we've done in the past, but we're always looking how how can we improve those ID and just push it uh, like a bit further. So it's it's a mechanic that you need to if you have a weapon that you don't really love, you can find one of uh, one of those trading station and you just exchange your loot for for another loot. But we're trying to make it more personal. So there is some occasion that you will receive something that uh, come directly from your loadout. So let's say you, you're 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 a person that are more uh, like an AR uh, player. So maybe you will will have more chance to to get some AR. So it will be pretty interesting to see how a player will engage with with that mechanic returning inside Warzone. Yeah, and 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 there is a lot of other cool thing that that's returning uh, and a new idea and something that it's new and I'm really excited to see how people will will engage with it. It's called the biometric scanner. So it's basically a scanner uh, that you will find in Rebirth Island only at the beginning. You will get scan, and depending on, on some odds, you will receive a key card, and that key card will be name, uh, like uh, with the name of your player card. So, and you will exchange it inside any buy station, and depending on the quality of that that key card, uh, the loot that the loot that you will receive uh, will be like uh, in line with that. So this will be an interesting thing to to engage player because you can kill another player and get the key card he just received and ex exchange it in his name. So it would be pretty interesting to follow up uh, on this one too. 
Yeah, I mean, there's a lot <laughs> packed into season yeah. three. And, you know, as of the day that we're filming, it just came out. So uh, it'll be really exciting to see how players are, you know, taking advantage of these new features you're talking about. Um, so, yeah, it'll be really cool to see. Um, do you have any favorite, like, kind of individual, like, items or operators or skins from season three? Yeah, I think that my personal one is really like um, something that we call the infill strike. Uh, we have something in Warzone that it's pretty common to everyone. It's it's called the the public event system. So it's it's something like oh you play and the circle is is closing and oh fire sale. So right now you you need to uh, you have an opportunity to engage with the buy station and have a, a rebate on on like the the item. Uh, what we have in in Rebirth Island that to uh, to add to to that great system it's what we call infill strike in rebirth island so it's basically when you're in the infill in the ac-130 uh you will be inside a plane and sometime you will see a jet fighter just trying to attack the island and maybe this time on a rare occasion you will see the lighthouse uh getting destroyed so it's, it's just a way to to like surprise the player and engage with the map in inside a, a new way because at the end of the day we just want to make you feel that every match is really unique and different and there is something new for you for uh, like to discover or to try out so having those infill strike uh, right now we have three of them we have like the rooftop of the prison the lighthouse and the water tower so it just it's just something to spice up uh, a little bit every match inside rebirth island it's not something that you will see every game but it's really interesting to see how people are just using those different poi to to, to find a way to win the match yeah and i love the term infill strike i feel like call of duty has come up with a lot of the kind of fun gaming lingo and like slang <laughs> in the last like couple decades so that's a pretty cool term but yeah there's a lot in season three but you know it's also really exciting that season three is releasing on warzone mobile as well um so tom please tell us about your role as the director of design on warzone mobile yeah so um like you were saying with season three, we've been designing a lot of great features that are specific for mobile, but because the game is cross progression, we get a lot of the great stuff that Etienne was talking about. So a lot of the, you know, the bat shared battle pass, a lot of the new weapons that are coming, uh, the new operators will be available in mobile as well. Um, but we're also introducing some new stuff for mobile players. So we have a new map called rust coming out for multiplayer um, we're doing some fun stuff in Rebirth because Rebirth is is a theme for the franchise this season. Uh, we'll be adding UAV towers to Rebirth. We've got a lot of fun gameplay that will be coming to Rebirth. So it's, it's really been fun for us to to enter the mix and and give uh, our twist to mobile players. Nice. And you mentioned cross progression. Um, so how exactly are the versions connected? Console, PC, mobile. Yeah, so all of your progression, so that's your uh, your rank, your weapon XP, your battle pass progression, and your inventory. So weapons, weapon level, all that kind of stuff is carried across uh, the different platforms. So, uh, for example, if you were to buy the battle pass and uh, make progress on that on console, you could then load up the uh, mobile game, start playing, and all of that progress you made on on the mobile would would contribute to that progression on the battle pass so you can really play from anywhere now um which is really exciting for for me as a fan of warzone uh to also now have the mobile game in the market that i can play anywhere and at any time and and be making progress towards my uh progression uh, from my side of view, if you want to continue like the battle pass, because maybe sometime you you wish you had more time with your console or PC just to uh, finish this one, but now you can just continue your own progress on on your mobile phone, so you can be anywhere. And I really love the opportunity to just oh, I, I love this gun, so I have I can play on on both platform, and I still have the same great experience on on both sides. So that that's really awesome. Yeah. yeah, and if you're if you're a camo grinder like me, you can jump into shipment on the phone and just start trying to unlock those camos as well. Anywhere you are. Yeah, I think we've we've had. I feel like I saw like an old like commercial we had for X Cloud, which was like a guy who was playing on his console and then running out the door and getting on the bus, and then he was playing on mobile. And so it's really cool that you can take Call of Duty on the go like that now. Yeah. Um, but you know, obviously 
designing a game for mobile is like very different from designing for console or PC. So what are some of the things you've done to optimize for mobile? Yeah, I mean, the the two areas that were the most important to us is uh, one, the controls. They're so different on a touchscreen than um, on a c- controller or a mouse and keyboard. So we really wanted to get that right. We wanted to get the fluid movement, the feel of the weapons, the gameplay and the, the things you can do in Warzone. We really wanted that to translate to a touchscreen. So we're heavily focused on... Um, building really fluid and and great feeling controls. Also, mobile is is a little bit different in that since you are touching the screen, many people like to play differently. Um, so we have a whole set of customizations that you can go into and adjust how your HUD, how your controls look, work, and feel on the mobile phone. Um, and so that so that really kind of was the main thing to look at. The other thing which we are always constantly doing is is trying to improve the the look, the feel, and the performance of the game across all devices. So, you know, we're constantly focused on that and and trying to make that experience better for all players because um, there is such a gap in devices in the mobile market and trying to make it a good experience for all players. Yeah. And it's pretty cool too that season three, I guess there's like maybe like a week and a half Delta, but season three is coming out like right away when it launches. And then for future seasons, will they come out at the same time on mobile and then the uh, console and PC? Yeah, we are now aligned with the uh, console and PC game. Uh, As those seasons come out, we'll be coming out at the same time. We'll have a lot of the shared content, again, the shared progression. Uh, But we're really excited. Uh, We're coming out ready to go with live operations. We've got mobile exclusive events that will be coming out every single week. We've got new content ready to go for players. So. Uh, we're really hitting the ground running. Uh, season three is just the beginning. You know, every season we're going to have a lot of great new stuff ready for players. Wow. Very cool. Um, and as both, I, I feel like this entry to mobile, like this is like a good way to get like new players into the Call of Duty, you know, universe as well. And like you said, the ecosystem. Um, so as both like new and veteran players jump in, what are you excited for them to experience? Yeah, I mean, I think that um, for new players, I'm excited about the fact that people that have heard about Call of Duty uh, and haven't had the opportunity to play the like real Call of Duty experience and have heard about Warzone but haven't had an opportunity to play it, to get in there and play it. I mean, it is it feels and looks and plays just like the console and PC version. I mean, everyone that sees it is kind of shocked, like, wow, this is, this is Warzone. And that was our goal. And so I think we've really delivered Warzone to a whole new audience. Um, so I'm excited about that. I'm also excited about existing players that uh, maybe don't have the time to play on their console or PC anymore. Now they have, you know, on the go and can maybe find time for it on this new, new platform. And for players that are playing it actively on console and PC, it's a, you know, something on the go when they want to just like mess with a gun, try different loadouts, you know, they can do that now when they're away from their uh, computer or console. So, so there's a lot of different ways to use this game and play the game. So it's, it's exciting. Yeah, and just like Tom just mentioned, I think that to reinforce that both platform is speaking to each other. So we're just making sure that maybe there is someone on, on the phone that never play like the console version. So it's just a way to and en- and en- en- like an entry point for Call of Duty and and after that just making sure that we 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 continue the growth of that community and deliver like the best experience that they can they, they can have in, inside that that Warzone experience. And it will be pretty interesting in the in the follow up to just see more and more collaboration across all the different group to to again just craft that that ultimate experience of, of a shooter on mobile on console. So, and on my side, something that I'm I'm really proud is is just that we continue to to build on that on that great version, and there is always opportunity for us to just uh, continue that way. So Call of Duty is, is really huge. So there is a lot of place we, we can explore to, to just continue to delight all the, the player that is uh, around the globe on, on this one. Yeah, and, and on top of that, what kind of what Etienne was saying, you know, Etienne and I talk, and as the mobile game gets more uh, mature, we're talking about how do we start doing things 
in collaboration more and where are areas we can you know make sure that hey uh, we're running this event in in pc and console let's make sure it's also running in mobile so i think you know as as we mature there's more opportunities for us to share uh, more across the different platforms Awesome. Yeah. I mean, I feel like you guys have your work cut out for you. <laughs> like season three is probably just the beginning, but um, I mean, what comes next from the player perspective? Um, I mean, I know it just came out, but more seasons, more events. Yeah. yeah. I mean, go ahead. You first. Yeah. <laughs> there, there is always something to, to, to look for. And I can already say that just, just for Rebirth Island, I think that player that will return each day will always find something new and something interesting to to engage with and i'm I'm just i'm just pleased that we have a lot of surprise uh coming like in the coming weeks so so just just for people that love easter egg and quests and 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 cool stuff there is there is always something to to looking for and for other season it, it will be again a really exciting chapter of of warzone and i'm sure that mobile will just double down on all of this yeah, it's really just the beginning for us. I mean, we're we just launched. Um, we've already got kind of a live roadmap and plan of all the stuff that is coming, and uh, I'm excited for it. I'm excited for to roll that out to players. We just got a lot of new stuff coming. We've got a whole franchise of great content and and history that we can tap into and and bring to mobile. And so we're really excited what the future holds. Yeah, and and even uh, as a developer, we 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 develop and we play a lot of Call of Duty. But uh, just just as a player, I continue to play like all night. So sometimes I'm just wishing uh, uh, I should not sleep and and have more free time to just play more and more of Call of Duty. But but again, I, I feel that the content that we deliver is just content that any gamer will will want to play and and to continue to move on uh, like. Uh, through all the different chapter that is coming on. Well, all that's left are for players to get out there and experience season three yep. in Warzone Mobile for themselves. Um, but if there's anything else that folks are looking for, head to CallOfDuty.com. But otherwise, thanks so much for joining me, guys. This has been great. Thanks, Etienne, Tom, and of course, Rebecca. Great job, as always, breaking down the latest in Call of Duty. All right, so just as we were like firing up the show this week, we saw a trailer hit IGN first, and it really looked, it very, definitely caught our attention. So this game is called Eternal Strands. This is the debut fantasy action adventure title from Yellow Brick Games. Uh, that if you've never heard of that studio, it's a relatively new studio. Mike Laidlaw, who worked on the Dragon Age games, is, is uh, I don't know if he's the head of the studio, but affiliated. Say no more. That already gets me gets me feeling really good. But looking at this video, the, the um, it's really cool, and I think a, a key differentiator for this game is what they're calling standing against giants. You face uh, gigantic adversaries through a mix of sword, spell, and mobility. You can climb on them. You can stab them. What would you, you think about this? Very, very Shadow of the Colossus, which is just a throwback for me from the PlayStation 2 era. I was terrible at Shadow of the Colossus. Just, just miserable. I killed that first one, and then after that, just loss after loss after loss. Did so you ever I, finish it? Heck no. Oh, oh my God. That oh. is... It, it just quit in ignominy and shame. It, oh, my God. Well, no. it yeah. is one of the greatest uh, games uh, uh, of all time. Actually, it had a starring role, I want to say, in like an Adam Sandler movie back then. Oh, yeah, kind of a weird, right. Yeah, all right, we're going way back. But also, mm. uh, I was also Dating reminded ourselves. a little bit more recently of Dragon's Dogma 2, where you're climbing up on mm -hmm. some of the larger mm -hmm. enemies and you really mm -hmm. just jamming into them. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, well... Two, two games I think people love a lot, one from a couple Thanks. decades ago, one from a couple weeks ago. So very interested to see more of that. So we'll be uh, keeping an eye on that one. Things that we're able to play now, though, let's get into this week's new releases. Deceit 2 is an online social deduction horror game where you can inspire fear as the terror, uh, play detective as an innocent, or create mayhem as the cursed. Ooh, okay. factions. Alchemist the Potion Monger. Uh, we all have a potion monger, you know, right? At my local bartender, I feel like. Oh, yeah. Uh, uh, this is a mixture of a simulation Cock puzzle. Cocktails. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I mean, cocktails are sort of like yeah. the, the oh. evolution of potions. They're chemists. Yeah, yeah, yeah it's exactly. The same thing. Yeah. yeah. So, this is a simulation puzzle, an RPG game where you can uh, leave the lab, venture into the world, change it with your brews. See? Yeah, it's very much there. Uh, choose your character from a wide array of animal, a wide array. 
Some things look good on paper, it's and true. then you sound like Bugs it's Bunny true. when you say it. Like, and clearly away. the person who wrote it doesn't have to <laughs> say it. Yeah, read these things out. Read these things out. Uh, Just things a things good out. Elmer Fudding on there. That's all good. I know. I got you, baby. Just all right, so those are... Get <sighs> the you really pump, you're gassing me up here. It's good. You're going to help me make it through. Okay. Game Pass, a lot of stuff to play. We already had talked about uh, Botany Manor, which is coming out next week. But out now, super hot, mind control delete. Did you all ever play super hot? Yes. All right, tell us, tell My us what you think. My list is really long right now. I'm like, I feel like I've been missing super, out on everything. Super hot was one of those games that like, the cool factors just threw the roof on that. Mm -hmm. You just, you set up things in a minute you're like, yeah, it looked like a video, like a movie shot, but that was all in game. Hold on, hold on, I'm gonna set it here, 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 and you're all done for. Thank you, and I'm out. So it's like a FPS, oh. but things only move, including bullets and enemies, when you move forward. So if you're sort of moving in a, in a direction that is not going to be working out, you can see it coming. So it's really more of a puzzle game. Obviously you need to aim, but there's all kinds of things where you're just sort of plotting out the, the, the best way to do it. Uh, kind of almost like Hitman, one frame at a time. Uh, yep. I, I think, so you, you figure out, okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna shoot over here and I'm gonna expect that as I move, that person's gonna go into this board. Or I'm gonna start something here with the intention that everyone's gonna go there, but actually I'm aiming for something over there. Exactly, and what's funny is like sometimes you'd be like, okay, all I get, need to do is not get hit by that thing, and it only moves when you do it, and then you still end up getting uh -huh. hit by it, and I'm like, mm -hmm. how? It's like walking into a parked car mm -hmm. and then falling on the ground, but uh, I haven't done that. You, the you said, door. no, that sounded like it was some personal I was on my bike, my okay? Man. It doesn't count. Uh, I mean, don't he far be it for weekend. me to judge, <laughs> but that sounded a little too close to home for me to think it was a coinky dink. All right, I blame my, my potion master alchemist on that. You know what? That's a clean kill. <laughs> All right, Lego 2K Drive. This is also out by the time that you watch this. I don't know if you played this. This is a really fun open world racing game. So I would say if you're a fan of Forza Horizon, really you should keep an eye out for Lego 2K Drive uh, wide open. Actually, you had Lego in some of the uh, Forza Horizon games. I want to say in four and in five. Yeah. Uh, some of the most fun add-ons for those games. Oh, uh, this everything is, a game. is awesome song. I feel like I can still hear it. Yes, <laughs> exactly. Don't speak its name. I know. Because then it gets stuck. Don't I know. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> so the cool thing about this is you actually get to build your car too. So oh, when you think about Ooh. Legos, it's, it's about, it's not just things exploding in like a, a bunch of bricks. It's actually getting to build, and so that was really cool about this. Lil' Gator game. Uh, this is out today. Embark on a cute Lil' Quest. It's, that, that's the trademark, the L-I-L. Uh, you discover new friends, uncover everything their island has to offer, climb, swim, glide, and slide your way into the hearts of many different characters you meet along the way in this adorable open world adventure. Is this set in Florida? I, I'm a Florida Gator, personally, so I think I have oh. to try it out. You kinda gotta, yeah, that's my, a rule. My little brother was a little Gator oh. as well, so. You yeah. gotta, that's a requirement. You it's have true. to try that you ever, you ever eat Gator? No. It's delicious. Let me tell you, Gator Burrito, Ooh. one of the a best. Gator thing. Burrito, oh, that's decadent. Yeah, yeah it is, <laughs> it's, it's a lot, <laughs> but yeah, me. it tastes like Oh. It's kind of like chicken, but like a little spicy. Can I guess. you do that? You can do a deep fried gator burrito 100%. You just eat the tail, by the way. It's oh, not so like you're like, go. you don't start at the front. I'm going to lead a podcast. Gator, gator, gator's pretty tasty. I'm going to stick to my chicken chipotle burrito. Thank you. <laughs> okay. I'm just like saying. Chicken eventually, if, so no. you may as well just try to get uh, If no. chipotle had a gator burrito, oh, yeah. then I would, I would go oh, for oh, it. Oh, yeah. mash. I would mash on that. Yeah. Anyway. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All right. A uh, couple more games coming to Game Pass. Uh, also out today, EA Sports PGA Tour on cloud, PC, and console. That's via EA Play, of course. Kona is coming back into Game Pass Ooh. on cloud and console. It's not about coffee, just so you know. Yeah. Um, uh, Botany Matter, as we mentioned, is coming out next week. That is a day one Game Pass release. Shadow of the Tomb Raider Definitive Edition out April 11th on cloud, console, and PC. Y'all played this one? The Tomb Raider reboot, just in general, was one of the best, well done. Like, you took a great series that already had a lot of love, a lot of great things about it, and then you just revamp it in a way that just sucks in modern mm -hmm. players. Like, I played both of them, and, and, and when I tell you that, like, Laura Croft's story was what really kept me going. Like the first ones you could play, you could have fun with, but that story, like, 
I really want to see how this lady mm-hmm. gets it done. This is nuts. So yeah, I, I might actually run back on Shadow of Tomb Raider. Yeah, it's a I, great game. I feel like we had three like distinct sort of generations of of Tomb Raider. There was oh, yeah. the original ones on on PS One, which actually got those re releases very recently. I yes. missed that second generation. Yeah, I, did, I missed I it missed too. The second I never. I, honestly, like Angel I, of I didn't Darkness. Play the, and, yep. yep, I missed the second I, I missed generation. Those, I was completely. hoping you would fill in those gaps. Uh, Haley, maybe mm. no. I played one of them, but I think it was the first one. So I was guess. it like really pol- like polygons and yes. stuff like yeah. yeah. So that okay, yeah. and those were recently remastered, and those were like very much like puzzle games in a way. Yeah, they were. They were really brutal. They were. Um, whereas these were much more action adventure. Oh yeah. Um, and I thought they were really good. I love uh, Rise of the Tomb Raider, and then Shadow of the Tomb Raider is the third one in this trilogy. This is where you start to think. Wait, are we the baddies? Wait, should, oh, I, should we not be guys? doing these things? Yeah, <laughs> so. obviously. Also, a really good third-person shooter, which yep. I, yep. you don't see a whole bunch of those these days. There's either A lot of folks lean harder to the first person, but a good third-person shooter? Yeah, well, yeah. Uh, if you haven't played it, Shadow of the Tomb Raider. Definit- this is the definitive edition, so you might have played it when it first came out a few years ago. Uh, probably about five years ago at this point. Well, it's out April 11th on Game Pass. And then one last one, Harold Halibut, which is out on April 16th. It's not about fish. Uh, we actually had a, a great art. I had no idea what it was about. Halibut, pretty tasty. Uh, it's not about coffee. I, actually, it's not about fish. Like, come on, man. Make, why aren't things what they're gator, supposed to be? We got halibut. <laughs> halibut, also pretty good burrito. I might have had one this uh, weekend, actually. Uh, so... Um, just every game could be could it be in a burrito? Can you have a yes. Tomb Raider burrito? Probably not. It's really old. They go um, bad. Uh, T Rex burrito? Yeah. You wouldn't have a T Rex burrito? Yeah. I, I mean, I would. The arm meat. That's where the good meat uh. is on those little arms. Uh, <laughs> so <laughs> Harold Halibut is is a is a game about uh, sort of an undersea civilization, and um, and so. Worth checking out. Hidden Game Pass, April 16th. It's not about a fish. Great article on Xbox Wire, news.xbox.com. Hit the little magnifying glass, type in Howard Halibut. I learned quite a bit about this game, and I thought it seemed really interesting. So I'll be checking that out. Uh, I guess it'll be in a couple weeks. Mm -hmm. All right. There's the new games. There's stuff you haven't played yet, and there's things that you probably have played that are bringing new experiences to you. We want to highlight one of those. No Man's Sky, the game that keeps on giving, has its orbital update. We're up to update 4.6, by the way. This allows you to dock your fully cost- customized Starship in a sleek new space station. Uh, this update is called Orbital. So space stations have been completely overhauled internally and externally. New Starships can be constructed from salvage parts. Frigate fleets can reach out for guidance with interstellar expeditions. Standing and uh, guilds have been improved. Trading and system economies have been deepened and so much more. I do appreciate that these folks just keep... The, the, one of the best like, investments you could have ever bought yeah. is to buy No Man's Sky. Yeah. The No Man's Sky story, especially with like when you look at it as a game and like how it's progressed, they've put so much love into that game, and it shows. You go back and play, you're like, oh, my God, this... The things, the quality of life improvements, and it, it'll capture you. If, you. if you have not played No Man's Sky because you, you thought it was one way, take another look at that sucker. Yeah, I mean, because it's been out for close to a decade at this point <laughs> and uh, has had, in a, all of that time, has completely changed. Really if you played it at launch, you should you should take another look. Something else just launched. Uh-huh. Who would like to have the honors oh, yeah. to unbox this thing? Oh, this is happening. Well, I don't get to do it. I'm the, I'm the guest. I'm, you've been here like three, four right. times. Right. You get to do stuff like this all Starting the time. Starting my gloves? This is a happy day for me. We, uh, we, oh, we, yeah. do have, we do have standards on the show. Do you want yours? Oh, I'm not Let's touching see. the controller. Oh, okay. Okay. I'm not taking yeah. this home. I'm not going to okay. put my grubby okay. paws on it. Yeah. I got you. I got you. Look, right. I don't know if people have been eating gator burritos That's, on look, the way in here. Friend. We filmed this at hold lunchtime. Hold on, friend. <laughs> I got some, some matches in this morning, and if you thought Doritos weren't involved, you're wrong. <laughs> Never too early. It's never too early. Do there you we like go. the blue Ooh. Doritos or the red ones, though? That's the hardest uh, question. Blue for true. I like both. All but... right. Let's turn it around to the Ooh. camera. Oh, what we're looking green. at here Ooh, is the cute. Nocturnal ah. Vapor Xbox Wireless Ooh. Controller Special Edition. It's oh. now available for pre-order. It's releasing next week. Oh. We love to just announce it and release it real quick. Should we take it out of the box? Oh, yeah. Oh, we take it's it not an unboxing if it's still in the yeah. box. Oh. Ron needs music. Oh. So this is the latest in the in the uh, vapor collection. We've had a couple of these. This one is uh, inspired by nature at night. Every 
turn around for that. Okay, I, look, man, I'm trying to be selfish with that thing. <laughs> it's giving gator. It yeah, is it giving is giving gator. gator. <laughs> oh, every color, baby. Yeah, yeah. look backwards. at that thing. <laughs> Good job with the gloves. I it's put them on backwards. Every oh, every, oh, every share. color I guess swirl. I'll share a little bit. Look at this. This is the pinky and the. Wow. Thumb. Oh yeah. Wow. And then you had the nails done too. You I had, know. You I had, had my them all nails pristine, done. And now you got they gloved. All right, so yeah. hold on. You're, Haley's holding onto the action with rubberized green diamond pattern grips Ooh, on the back case. The back of, of course, this thing, every color swirl is an expression of like the expansive the landscape. The TikTok girly where you got to go like that. Yep. Get it, get it, get it. <laughs> <laughs> and Can't like every straight. Xbox wireless controller, you can quickly pair with, play on, and switch between devices, including console, PC, and mobile. I'll repeat it because... We've mentioned this before, but you might not know. You can connect this to both an Xbox console and a Bluetooth device at the same time. At the same time. And what you do, if you want to switch back and forth between the two, is you double tap that button on the top, and it'll do a double oh. blink. And that's when you know you switched between the controller oh, and you Yo, switch to your Bluetooth. That's so game I will use a controller a for, for my Xbox, and then I'll switch over to my phone oh. uh, to play. Actually, I've actually been playing Warzone Mobile. I literally just prop my phone up uh, on my keyboard, like in between meetings, and you know play one of the mobile uh, Royale matches for 10 minutes, and then just back to my Xbox. I didn't know okay. that's what that button of course. Thank you. Well, it's used for pairing, but then <laughs> yeah. once you're paired to both, I didn't know it had just a double, double tap. tap function. Yep. So cool. Dang. One right, of those man. things, you know, you work here. You, yeah. you pick up a, a, a tip or two. I, I might have to get back into the mobile some, game and join. Oh. Yeah. All right. I've been hard on the console. I've been hard console these days, but. Ooh. All right. I so, also play Bejeweled on the uh, on the Xbox app. The the sorry Microsoft Jewel on the Xbox app. Yeah. That uh that helps a lot too. There's a there's a Jewel. I had no idea. Are you wait? Hold on. Did y'all not know about this? Which, uh, like on that, like on the, the Xbox, Xbox app. app on yeah, your phone. you can get you get like points for playing Microsoft Jewel on the Xbox. Okay. App. Oh. Good and I just run a couple matches on that. Like I'm waiting for the something. More you know. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> there are achievements. I didn't know if you know, like for stuff like uh, like Solitaire and a few of the other sort of like Microsoft fun games. It's actually achievements. Wait for real? Oh yeah, and quite All a few right, of them. Right. So right. and they're free, and you just sign in with your gamer tag. So if you download Microsoft Solitaire, there's the Mahjong game, the, sort of the matching tiles. This is what I do like when I'm on a this plane, I'm happening. just sitting there Get just like tapping away Mahjong. and listening to a podcast. <laughs> this is happening. Yeah. Have more it's not like traditional more Mahjong, it's the you. tiles. <laughs> anyway, all right, that, there we go. All right, and before we wrap it up here, there's a chance for you to win something oh, with yeah. free code Friday. I hope the all oh, yeah was for, for that segue because I feel like I really killed it there. This week we have <laughs> Call of Duty, Warzone, uh, and Modern Warfare 3 Season 3 Battle Pass bundles to give away to a handful of lucky listeners. You should know how it works by now. Keep an eye on at Xbox Wire on Twitter. That's the Xbox Wire Twitter account. If you haven't checked out Xbox Wire, by the way, my team works on it. They write some good stuff there. It's where you find out about your Game Pass games and various other things. So, you know, you can check it out or you can just keep listening to us. So check out that Twitter account, Xbox Wire on Twitter. Between noon and 2 p.m. Pacific Daylight Time, uh, we have moved to Daylight Time on Friday, April 5th. If you're watching this online today, that's tomorrow. Uh, we'll have a question. We will ask the question here on the show. You will put the answer to that, and then they will uh, randomly pick winners. They will DM the winners with the code uh, to that battle pass. I a few extras this week, so it's a really good chance, or a decent chance, I should say, uh, that if you play, you know, you might win. All right, so what is the question? Well, I'm going to pose it to you oh, two. You ask us. Oh, boy. All right, Ron and Haley, if you could recruit any fictional or real characters to your three-person Warzone squad, who would you drop in with? Oh, All right, so for the cast that's listening, if you can see me, you can just see this. I have a gigantic Master Chief helmet on my shirt. I'm wearing a UNSC hat. If you think that the Master Chief himself is not going to be on my three-man squad, you are wrong. I almost want to just have him be all three people, all right? Do I have to be one of the people? Uh, you're one of three. Okay, so, so I'm one of three. So, so, so pick two more. Definitely Chief. Uh, and you know what? You know what? You know what? It's going to be off the beaten path. Just Let's hear tad. it. Mm -hmm. Dante from Devil May Cry. Okay. Dante from Devil May Cry. He knows how to operate a firearm. He's got close combat down. And you know what? Worst case scenario, Devil Trigger, he'll get it done. So, yeah, I would take Dante, Dante and, Chief, and Master Chief. A little bit okay. of magic, a little bit of tactic, and then me just weighing both of them down, saying, help me, help me, please help me, oh, God. Taking over the me. chat, you know, in, oh, the, in yes. the headset. Yeah. Hmm. Haley. 
Um, Who you got? It's like a really hard question. This is a hard question. A and question. a part of me was like thinking like maybe a real life person that would be funny mm. or fun. Chris Jenner, I feel like she's like the low key the smartest person in the room. But you, you will make it into the it. you will make it into the top three yeah. with Chris Jenner, and yeah. you make money doing it somehow. She it's would true. have a marketing campaign and like really good branding. <laughs> Um, but I guess you if it acts, that's how my brain works. I'm really sorry. You know um, no, but I guess like wrong with that. character, um, part of me says like Sailor Moon and then the other part of me is like maybe like Zelda that could be interesting. Okay. Yeah. All right. Zelda or Link? Oh, that's hard. Link. Okay. Yeah. I mean, Link's got the little, yeah. the, the little phone thing yeah. all the time. So yeah. he had the little, the little switch in his pocket. Yeah. I can't remember what that's called. All right. So who would you recruit you to know. join you on your three-person Warzone squad? Take a look uh, on Friday, April fifth, between noon at noon and two p.m. on Twitter.com/slash Xbox Wire. Answer that question, and we will randomly pick some winners to. Get that those war zone codes. So and then you can uh, you can get the new skins, you get the battle pass, yeah. all the good stuff. I haven't seen what, what's in this week. That's why we put the interview on because they know <laughs> I don't. All right, that about wraps it up for this week. Please feel free to follow us on Twitter.com/xboxwire, uh, YouTube.com/xbox, and wherever your finer podcasts are found. Just search for Xbox Podcast. We are not going to be here next week. I'm on vacation. I got to get me another Gator burrito and play Hollow Knight on the plane. Uh, but I want to thank Ron and Haley for joining us this week. You all were great. Would love to have you back. So don't threaten me. With let that. us do this again. And uh, yeah, so we will be back in two weeks. Any final thoughts from either of you? Uh, you know what? Can I get like two shouts out? You, two shouts out. Two shouts out. You've already had one. <laughs> Look, man, it was for this Make a Wish kid. Okay, fair, fair, fair. It doesn't count. I told Pops I was going to be on the Xbox podcast. This is going to be great. So, oh, yeah, cute. Pops, I see you, Pops. We made it, Pop. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Stand the man. Uh, and then also, man, just a uh, big shout out for Earth Day. That's coming oh, yeah. up, That's man. That's in April. April That's coming yeah. up. So, man, just shout out for our home. We live on it. We only got one home. Take care of that sucker. Other than that, be good to each other. Play you some games, preferably some Halo. Uh, and then uh, be cool. Be cool. All right. No better way to end the show than yeah, that. Yeah, you killed it. Yeah. Okay. Well, we're going to leave it there. Thanks for joining <laughs> us. We will see you in two weeks. Good luck, everybody. See y'all.